Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. It seems like you can't go anywhere without hearing the terms inflation, hyperinflation, and recession. And there's a very good reason for that. When it comes to inflation in particular, things haven't been this bad since the early 80s. So now's a very good time for us to take a look at our preps and other aspects of our lives to make sure that we're in a good position to deal with those things. Whether we just continue to pay higher prices at the grocery store and at the gas pump, or if this thing devolves into a complete and total economic collapse. And one area that a lot of preppers overlook, but is extremely important when it comes to economic situations such as these, is their own personal finances. And y'all, I'm not your financial advisor, nor do I wanna be. Everybody's financial situation is very different, so educate yourself about money and maybe get help from somebody who's qualified that you know you can trust so that you can make the best possible decisions for your particular situation. But one thing that'd be good for anybody to do is to just keep track of your spending, whether it's a spreadsheet or just the ledger in the back of your checkbook. Knowing the money that you have coming in and the money that you have going out is beneficial because maybe you don't know how much money you're spending on, say, eating out every month. Maybe you don't realize how much money you're spending on groceries. But knowing what you have going out and what it's going for can allow you to make decisions about things that you can cut out later on. Another thing that you may want to consider is not just relying on one stream of income. And a lot of people, the only money that they have coming in every month is from their day job. And that does kind of put you in a vulnerable position because while we would like to think of our job as something secure, because maybe we've been with a particular company for a very long time and surely they wouldn't lay us off, we know that's not always the case, especially when things start to get worse and worse. Even within the past few days, multiple huge companies, not just Twitter, have laid off thousands of employees. So even if it's something as simple as just a side hustle, maybe going to garage sales, buying like toys or tools, and selling them for a little bit more on maybe an online sales group, maybe Craigslist or something else. There are people that make some good money doing that. Then there's other things that you could do using skills that you already have, maybe something like photography. If you have technical skills and a good eye, web design could be something to go into. Carpentry is another good one. And even if you can't build something like a full set of cabinets, maybe you can do furniture assembly. And babysitting and yard work can be good options as well. And y'all, I know that side gigs take a little while to get started, especially to the point where they're making money, but it's something good to go ahead and start working on if you haven't done so already, just to give your finances a little bit more redundancy. Some more things you want to take a look at when it comes to your finances are savings and debt reduction and I think of these kind of as two sides to the same coin but when it comes to savings probably the most basic form of that would just be a $500 cash emergency fund and that's going to allow you to deal with unexpected expenses that pop up maybe your tire blows out and you don't have a replacement warranty or something like that on it then you can replace that without having to swipe it on a credit card then also if there's a situation where banks or ATMs are temporarily down in your area then you can use that cash to buy what you need if stores are still up and running beyond just that $500 emergency fund if you can get to the point where you have enough money to cover 3 months or more of expenses, that's a good position to be in. And I know a lot of y'all, especially right now with inflation going on, you're kind of hesitant to be putting money back because it seems like it's becoming worth less and less and less every day, which is a very valid concern. I don't want to discount that at all. But you also got to consider that with recessions and all this other stuff going on, it's very possible that you could get laid off like what we discussed a second ago, or maybe you're in a situation where you get sick or injured and you can't work for a few months. Having some money set aside could allow you to pay your mortgage and your rent during that time and also your utilities so you don't wind up homeless or without heat or water. And I know that there's a lot of folks out there that like to have some of their savings in things like precious metals or other alternative currencies. Just be sure that you do have at least some money that's liquid and easily accessible in case you need it quickly. Also avoid accumulating additional debt. Rates right now are ridiculously high, especially on large purchases like houses and cars. So now's probably not the best time to do those things unless you just absolutely have to. Then also having less debt, it's gonna be good because you can put more money towards preps. You're not paying credit card bills with $100 or more of interest every month. But also if you're in a situation where you lose part or all of your income, 
then that's going to be less of a strain on you while you're paying for the things that you absolutely have to have. And debts with variable interest rates would be very good targets. And I think it's important to strike a balance between savings and trying to put as much money towards getting out of debt as you can. For example, if you don't even have like say $500 set aside to deal with just minor emergencies, you might be putting a bunch of money towards getting out of debt but the second that something happens, maybe you have to go to the hospital or something breaks down at your house, then you're gonna go right back into debt because if you don't have anything in savings, how are you gonna take care of it? You're gonna put it on the credit card. So striking a balance, having some money in savings to deal with things, but also striving to get out of debt don't necessarily do one and leave the other completely undone. Another thing you want to do is just eliminate absolutely pointless expenses. And thinking about that, I have a couple that I need to get rid of. We have like this membership at a bookstore that we never ever use because the bookstore is crazy expensive and they suck like $50 out of our account once a year just for absolutely no reason. So I need to get rid of that. But also, if you have anything like that, go ahead and get rid of that yourself. And also becoming more self-sufficient can help you from a financial standpoint. Being able to do things like make minor repairs around your house is good. I mean, even if it's just something like running a drain snake down a, down a pipe, that could save you hundreds of dollars instead of having to call a plumber. Now, if you do it wrong and you mess stuff up, then it'll be more expensive. You gotta kind of weigh that, but even doing other things like having a garden, growing your own food, can help you save money and it's also a valuable skill that you can use the worst things get. And in addition to finances, you also want to continue to do just normal prepping stuff as much as you can. Continue to pick up food, continue to get other things like toilet paper and medications because if inflation continues to get worse, those things are just going to become more expensive. So getting them now when things are just more expensive than they used to be could be beneficial even if Something happens where prices drop like a rock tomorrow. I seriously doubt that's going to happen, but at least you would have those items so where if something goes down, then you have them if you need them. When it comes to groceries in particular, checking sales ads can be a good way to help you get more preps for less money. I know my family and I, we still get junk mail once a week that tells us the, all the sales going on at the grocery stores. Maybe those would be worth looking at and not using as toilet paper like I suggested in another video. But with everything going on with the holidays, we also have Black Friday coming up. So it might be worth looking at those to see if there's any preparedness related items that you could pick up now. Things like camping gear, Gear, heaters, stuff like that. And the holidays are also a really good time to pick up tools and accessories for them. Another way that you could save money on preps is to compare the online price with the store price to make sure that you're getting the best deal. A perfect example of that would be the hot water bottle that I showed in the how to stay warm during a winter power outage video like last week. When I went to the store to go pick this up, I had seen the online price was $7.99. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can spend $7.99 on something to show in a video, whatever. And then I get to the store and it's 20 bucks. I'm like, you've gotta be kidding me. So as stupid as it was, while I was standing in the aisle or walking down the aisle going out of the store, I bought it online. And then I went across the street, shot some footage at a store, and came right back. So I got this for like $8 and something after taxes rather than paying $20 for it. And yes, it's stupid, it's a pain in the rear, but you can save money doing that. Shopping at thrift stores and garage sales can be beneficial also because you can find really good deals on stuff, especially like kitchen stuff, like cookware, tools. Like I got this brace and set of bits for like 20 or $25. Then also other things like camping gear, clothing. Maybe you're needing some cold weather clothing or you're just, wanting stuff to wear around the house. Buying it at those places is probably gonna be a lot cheaper than buying it new. Or maybe you have an appliance breakdown, like a washing machine. Instead of going to the store and buying one for $1,000 or more, consider just going on Craigslist or something and buying one used. That's I've done that several times, and I've been able to get some really good deals. And as far as the kinds of preps you should be picking up now, my advice would be to focus on things that can be used in as many different kinds of situations as possible. We talked about food and water a second ago, medicine, and then also other things like lighting preps, energy preps. Those would be okay too, since there's lots of different things that could knock the power out.
and the worse things get, the more you're gonna have to think about security. A few months ago, I did this video showing how to secure your home, and I'd strongly recommend checking that out. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.